In the beginning, the real beginning, God as we know him didn't exist. Reality was nothing but a dot called spirit in an endless void of nothingness. The best word to describe this dot is unity or spirit. This dot, unity, was the starting point of all that is and will ever be. After a measurable time of being alone in nothingness, gained consciousness, and with this consciousness came a need to perceive. However, spirit couldn't perceive itself while simply being itself. So, out of its infinite but unrefined power of all reality, spirit expanded its consciousness as far as it could go without moving, creating a sphere around itself. And this was the first circle in the flower of life. But spirit didn't know who or what it was. All comes Omri. To do this, spirit split into two, and for the first time, spirit could see itself from a point of view outside itself. By this, unity became duality, more than it ever was and yet still the same. This makes the Vesica Pisces. The Vesica Pisces is often used to represent the intersection of heaven and earth, or the union of Christ and the Church. It is also used in various esoteric and mystical teachings, including sacred geometry, where it is believed to represent the fundamental patterns and structures of the universe. The Vesica Pisces is not only visually striking, but it also contains mathematical and geometric significance. The ratio of the height of the Vesica Pisces to its width is the square root of three, which is a significant number in many ancient traditions. The Vesica Pisces also contains the mathematical proportion of the golden ratio, which is often associated with beauty, harmony, and balance. In addition to its mathematical properties, the Vesica Pisces is also believed to represent the duality and balance of masculine and feminine energies. The pointed oval shape is often associated with the feminine, while the circles that form it represent the masculine. The intersection of the two circles is seen as a point of balance and harmony between these energies. However, as it was only split into two, it could only see itself from one point of view. The solution would have been to move around, revolving around itself to gain a full understanding of what it looked like from different perspectives. But unity was far from movement, as time and space were yet to manifest. Duality was everything, but everything wasn't yet in reality. Therefore it split again, becoming the Trinity. This Trinity, the first Trinity, lasted for a long time, so much so that it began to feel like the beginning. However, it was incomplete. It lacked balance and wholeness. Unity, now Trinity, knew it wasn't seeing itself completely. There was more to see, and it couldn't abide the askew perspective it was forced to endure. So, it split once again, thereby increasing the total pieces of its viewing self to three. With three pieces, viewing it from different perspectives, it was complete. Unity had become more. And as more, its viewing parts began to teleport. There was no time and space to move. However, all three perspectives of unity moved around it, switching positions and perspectives. Each piece that viewed the center wanted to see the center from every perspective possible. The movement of these three pieces revolving around the center created the first triangle, the first shape that ever existed. This triangle with the original spot in its middle became the eye of reality, the all-seeing eye, the beginning of true and complete consciousness. In its new consciousness, the all-seeing eyes couldn't speak, but it could think. Its first thoughts were simple and unique, the first thought that ever existed. Odd Oz, pronounced Od Od Oz, I see, or Ah I, pronounced Ah Hey, ah, hey. I am. This thought over eons expanded into a slightly more complicated thought. Od Oz, Od Oz, Ta Noblo Dina Nena, pronounced Od Oz, Od Oz, Ta Noblo Dina Nena. Now I see, now I see that what I am, Ah I, I am. And with it creating consciousness from unconsciousness, the triangle that formed the all-seeing eye was whole and complete. It provided a perspective that seemed comprehensive. However, the all-seeing eye could see that there were a lot of perspectives it was oblivious to. As a shape, it could see from all angles and points on a single plane, but there were countless planes and countless points. Therefore, still determined to gain more perspective and understanding, the first shape, the triangle of the all-seeing eye, transformed into the first structure called the tetrahedron. The creation of the tetrahedron led to the creation of the octahedron, and the further development of the octahedron transformed into the six spheres. These six spheres established the pattern for all things to follow. In the beginning was an infinitesimal dot. Then form was established by the triangle, structure was established by the tetrahedron. But it was the six spheres created by the further development of the tetrahedron 
that establish the pattern of all life and all existence. The six spheres mark the beginning of life, a graduation from mere consciousness and observation to existence and experience. The points of intersection of these six spheres formed the points of the true star, which would later be known as the Star of David. But this was then, far before the existence of human life, or David himself. Then it was just six spheres, overlapping at different points, touching constantly. These six spheres began to interact in a unique and unprecedented way. At their different meeting points, something unfathomable began to happen. The spheres began to do more than mere touching. For lack of a better word, it could be said that they began to copulate. This process let out waves of vibrations, producing energy and matter to carry out a process akin to creation. From the vibrations and copulation of these spheres came the seed of life. Now this seed wasn't life. It was simply the potential of life. The seed of life grew into the egg of life and blossomed into the flower of life that brought forth the fruit of life. And so, the pattern for the creation, life and growth of every living being in the universe was established. The waves of energy produced during the process of creating the patterns of life formed a web of polarity that developed into time and space. As there were six spheres, there were six patterns of time and space, six dimensions, distinct and complete. Each sphere had its own six dimension, and just like unity, each sphere felt the need to observe itself. So each sphere split, creating a copy of itself while still maintaining its dimensional properties of time and space. These twelve spheres grew into full consciousness, bound by the laws of the sixth dimension created by their own copulation. Conscious of what they were, and what they had become, the twelve spheres became the first living beings, fully alive, fully conscious. Unlike everything before them, these twelve spheres had wills. Before the twelve spheres, there had been consciousness, observation, perspectives and experiences. But it was with the advent of the twelve spheres that will came to be. These twelve spheres with twelve distinct wills became known as the Elohim. The Elohims were archangels with unimaginable power and might. Alone they were beyond comprehension. Together, they were the Metatron. Joined as one and yet not the same, they formed a structure which was to be known as the Metatron Cube. The shape and form of the Metatron Cube, if seen from an insightful perspective, would reveal the Vitruvian Man for it was the image of the Metatron Cube that formed the basis of man's image and the image of all supreme creatures. The Archangels, following the shape of their coalition, were pure light with the ability to morph into the image of man, splitting and multiplying over and over again, reproducing at an exponential rate, the shape of the Metatron morphed into something more. The Tree of Life was created, a structure that contained all Archangels with all their information, wills, and experience. These vast data is the basis for all creation. It is the DNA that all living beings possess, edited and different in various species, but all variants of the pure and original Metatron. These patterns and processes can be seen in everyday life. They can be seen in the creation of a galaxy and the cellular growth structure, splitting and multiplying thousands and thousands of times more. Moving away from just vibration, we eventually come to the first living being, which we call God or Source. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed learning about the creation of God and consciousness. We put a lot of time and effort into creating this video, and we're thrilled to share it with you. In our next video, we'll dive into the fascinating history of the creation of the first beings and worlds. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our upcoming content. See you in the next video.